This video is on Rule 13, uh, Rules for Handling Unapproved Processes, which will be brought before the State Central Committee of the Democratic Party of Oregon on December 2nd. My name is Larry Taylor, and I'm a member of the Rules Committee that has been working on this issue. Um, just to give you some background, what is the State Central Committee? Uh, because for many people, it's not clear on what their authority is. But the State Central Committee is the governing body of the party, and it may delegate its authority. So uh, although it, you might not know it from the lack of business brought before the assembly, it is the governing body. And if it needs to delegate authority, it is the body which does that. The problem that we have are undemocratic and in some cases undocumented processes are being imposed on uh, the within the Democratic Party of Oregon and, and specifically to people running for office. These processes have never been approved by the State Central Committee and some are, in the, the opinion of some of us, embarrassments to the Democratic Party. Um, the primary example of this is are the policies that discourage and penalize challengers to incumbents by denying them access to the fundamental campaign tools available to incumbents, thereby creating an unlevel playing field. And really it's about the right to grant voter data access. The right to grant voter data access was given away to PACs. Again, this was not authorized by the Democratic Party of Oregon State Central Committee. The history behind this rule was at the, it began in the Q2 2017 meeting of the State Central Committee, which is now a year and a half ago, it was moved and seconded that all undocumented processes of the Democratic Party of Oregon are deemed void and all current and future policies are subject to approval by the State Central Committee. The motion was referred to the Re Rules Committee where it uh, uh, sat for over a year. Uh, a draft of the, the solution to this was written uh, and proposed in September of this year. A uh, subcommittee was created to review the draft language. That subcommittee has finished their work and we will be passing it back to the Rules Committee on December 2nd to be brought before the State Central Committee for final passage. Uh, this is a standing rule, so it's it's not the, the, you know, it's not an amendment to the bylaws, which is very difficult to change. If for any reason we, circumstances, would cause us to want to suspend this, it's very easy to do by a majority, um, by a majority vote. But now I'd like to briefly go through what standing rule 13 uh, is and what each of the part components of it uh, refers to. So the first, the first uh, line of standing rule 13, uh, policies discussed herein are mandatory courses of action, directives, or operating procedures not otherwise covered by the bylaws or standing rules passed by this body. The second rule is to ensure fairness and equal in treatment. All policies of the Democratic Party of Oregon shall be written and approved. All policies shall include the date that they were approved and the body approving them. This will help us track when these things were these policies were created and who created them uh, there's policies floating about that no one knows where they are some of them for a long time wasn't even written down and so people were keeping alternate burner versions in their head uh, which is not a really great way to have a policy number three all current policies which have not yet been written and approved by the proper body of the democratic party of oregon will be considered provisional policies all new policies must be written and approved by the proper body. Number four, and this is a little bit long, any member of the DPO may request in writing to the chair, a vice chair, or the rules chair that a provisional policy be written and considered for approval by the proper body of the DPO. At as soon as opportunity, the proper body will then draft a written policy for that provisional policy, which will be sent to the proper body for approval at its soonest opportunity. If the policy fails to be approved by the proper body within three months of the written request, the provisional policy shall cease to exist. This is language to protect uh, uh, people in the Democratic Party of Oregon from, un from having no control or uh, uh, having no ability to to, to drive resolution on, on these rules that are created in the background. 
Number five, all policies shall be made available to registered Democrats upon request. Policies shall also be made available to members of any other body of the DPO to which they are relevant. This is just to make it clear that there are no secret policies within the Democratic Party of Oregon and ensures transparency. The final one, uh, all policies are subject to amendment by the State Central Committee by majority vote. This is implied uh, by the fact that we are a del deliberative assembly and, uh, and, and so our underlying rules are Robert's Rules of Order. Uh, this should be self-evident, but like many rules, people are not familiar with Robert's Rules of Order. And so sometimes it's beneficial to reiterate these rules inside the standing rules. What you can do, uh, if you are a delegate, please uh, review this video. If you have any questions, you're welcome to contact any member of the Standing Rules Committee to, for further explanations. If you are not a member of the uh, uh, of the State Central Committee, uh, please contact the delegates in your State Central Committee and ask them to support these rules. You have members in your county that are elected to represent you at the State Central Committee, and you should be communicating to them so they know how you feel and how, how they should vote. Um, you can get contact information for your delegates by contacting the chair of your Democratic Party if you do not know who they are, and all of the chairs can be found at dpo.org counties. Thanks, and we will see you on December 2nd.